Hi guys, I am Nutrix the Synth Guy, and today I'm talking about another app for the iPad, more specifically a DAW, a digital audio workstation. In this case, one called Tabletop. Now, Tabletop is not a new one in the game. They have been there for probably three to four years. And uh, if you follow my videos, you know that I didn't talk about it when I did my top 17 apps of 2017. The reason is simple. I didn't use it at that point in 2017 because I tried other apps and at one point I got the message from the iOS, I think it was in iOS 10, saying that this app needed to be updated to actually run correctly on my iPad. So I put it aside. I stopped using it totally. I was happy to see that about, I don't think what's last month, that Tabletop was back with a new version and it was updated and you could actually now run on iOS 11. So I was an happy camper. I will show you why I actually really like this. But just to explain what it is first is that like any DAW, you can record sound, you can record MIDI, you can program stuff around. What's cool about this one, you have a bunch, a list of modules like beatbox, samplers, uh, synthesizers, uh, sample playback devices, um, effects, mixers, uh, sound manglers and distorters and all that stuff. And you can just drag them into the window and create your studio as you go along. And you can repatch cables in a different manner if you don't like the way it's patched. You can put uh, effects in the middle of your line or you can send it to the mixer and then the mixer send it to send and return if you want. It's all your choice on how you want to patch everything up. And there's even a split function you can. So that is really why it's cool to use. Now, like anything, there's limits and, and things that I wish I could do more with this. I'll give these wish list at the end of, of the video. So let's start with a tour and how it works. Okay. I am in tabletop and the first window you have is this thing here. You actually go between my session or demo sessions and all of them are just examples. Either you start from them, like the demos are just examples to start with and, and kind of demo to, for you to understand what you can do with that. But it, let's say we go from my session and we start from scratch. So you go here, I'm gonna load these untitled copy. What you have when you start from scratch is you've got this audio interface output information here, CPU usage, whoops, sorry, CPU usage here, and you've got a mixer. It's a very basic mixer. It's stereo inputs. You've got the panning, you've got the volume, and that's it. There's no effects, there's no mute. And if you want something more for mixer purposes, let's say I, let, I'm gonna take that one, I'm gonna delete it. So I'm gonna move it aside and it goes to the trash bin at the top, it's gone. Now I'm gonna go here. I'm gonna click on the little keyboard kind of graphic here. And I've got the list of all the devices that I can actually, I can actually load in. So you're gonna have what they call the wedge. Wedge is a physical box that they sell that is a Bluetooth device that hook up to your iPad and then that controls MIDI and audio if you want. And there's also a light show with LED on it. So if you wanna use this and control uh, the rest of your studio with it, the wedge is a good option. This would be to connect this software to which you've got phase. I mean, these here are um, separate apps like a phase 84, uh, a Kai M IMPC, an Arturia iMini, and there's others. One, these are the one I have installed that I actually have on my computer uh, on my iPad here. I can actually use. Um, and if you go in device store, there's more. There's the Arturia iProfit. There's Akaya IMPC Pro, there's Strike. These are different instruments. And if you want them, well, you have to go here and buy it. You know, you get it in the iTunes App Store and then you have access to this as a standalone device and also have access to this within Tabletop. Now there's others here you can buy, InterFX, you can InterApp Audio Effects you can use here, Boom Room, which is a reverb, and Signal, I guess, InterApp Audio Recorder. So you can record what's happening in another app into this one. Um, and then everything else here are just some, the Gridlock is a sampler, a little bit like the MPC if you want. Uh, this is a polyphonic cue. Actually, you just take this, you drag it where you want to drop it, and then you've got your... You can hear 
here that this is a loop. The loop is very short. So, okay, let's get rid of that for now. Take this, trash. I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna load a mixer. Uh, this four channel with insert. Like this one has solo and on and return and send. Uh, not insert, but send and return. So that's what I want. I'm gonna move this here, go back here. Let's load a drum machine, a something classic like a 808 or 909. I'm going to go with a TB303, actually they call it a TT303, which is a TB303 sound alike. And then you have, let's say, let's say we're going to add some distortion. Um, it's actually a bit crusher and then you got distortion. Or right, let's bring the digital distortion here. And what else do we have? Let's go in and load another instrument. Let's say, um, the oh, this one, the Tenorion. It, it's not a Tenorion, but it makes me think of one. Um, this thing is uh, it's just a really cool matrix of, of notes. You know, just put your notes where you want it. And... I actually hear this also. Let's, uh, let's go back to the mixer then. Okay, so let's load another one. Let's try this. It's just a fun, very rapid way to make, you can want them to be shorter or longer. It's very simple, you know. And let's say I'm gonna choose uh, instead, I'm gonna choose to be in, uh, I don't know, well, it's a major, it's, it's good, fine. I exit that, I'm gonna go in here and I'm gonna add the drum. No, the first one was the drum. So I'm gonna just say the kick. I'm gonna put the kick, very classic stuff. Maybe that's a little bit too much. first one we go to click one here this is kind of the velocity so you can control you know how much with the second sound you can play with it here. Let's, let's keep this one for fun. Okay. And you want to control this. I'm going to go zoom out. Go back to, sorry, here. Okay, well maybe I want to have some distortion here, so I'm going to take this one, 
And that's where it becomes interesting is that when you want to say, I'm going to patch the distortion. So I'm going to click here. I'm going to delete this one. Okay. I'm going to take the send, the send here, send A into the distortion and distortion back into the aux or the return A. So it's patched into this. Let's try it another one. I'm going to add another effects. So what do we have here? I'm going to have um, uh, reverb. Okay. Or there's no one I don't have. I don't know. Oh, echo is here. I'm going to put an echo here. And um, I'm going to get rid of that one. I'm going to take uh, this other, send it to this, and this into that. That's it. And then if I play it, I can say if I send it to the distortion. Here. Yeah, I got distortion happening. Okay, distortion. Or if I send it to the other one. So let's say I don't send it to the drum. Press on it, you have more control over the value, and if you just move like that, if you want it precise, you press on it, and then you've got access to more precision. That's also pretty good. It's an example of how you want to work with this. Now, what's cool about this also is you can actually go in and load stuff like we said earlier, like uh, the iMini, uh, which is also made by them for Arturia. So now you have this here, and then you have the sound of the iMini built into right into tabletop. So if you want to enter notes again, now you go, okay, I've got the notes here. You got this own sequencer. I've got the sequencer here. I've got this sequencer over there. And then how do I play this one? Well, you have this thing here, and that appears when you run this into tabletop. You've got a sequencer that appears here. So you either go in and write the notes, or you put it in record mode and as it plays, remember, super. And you also have record motion. You also have the recording of the motion here. Okay, so. And then you say, well, if you want to edit, you have the screen over there. You can edit. You can take one, double double press on it. Whoops, where? Here you go. You got the information about how to use it. Duplicate, velocity, delete, and move it, and all that stuff. And then you move out of this. Now you go, okay, that's pretty fun, but how do I make a song out of this? Because now I only have like one pattern. Well, there's another device that you can load in here. You go at the bottom, and it's called the Trigger Raider. And this is actually the box that controls every sequencer. So the sequence I have here is the one that everybody has in memory right now. You're kind of in sequence number one, okay? And then if I say, well, I'm going to duplicate that again, if I press play, I'm triggering it, okay? I can actually select to say I want it by block. So I'm going to play it here. When the block is over, it's waiting, and then I'm going to switch to the next one. Okay, so this is actually with the record of the synth. This one is not. Okay, it's only the only thing that has not been recorded is these because these are part of um, what they have built in. Now, if I'm going to go in here, let's say I'm going to load in. Uh, what do we also have here? Uh, the IMPC. Okay, IMPC. Actually, yeah, take it, put it here. So now this one, okay, let's 
let's try another whoops sorry let's go ah, i don't want to edit it cancel cancel program list let's load uh, something else let's say uh, electro okay let's try this for fun so again if i want to done if i want to record something you can go Okay, it's, I'm just playing around to have an idea of uh, an idea of what I want to do. If we go back here and then we try this one. Okay, we're in the number two here. Let's go here and record again this one. Another one for this one. Okay. So I have this one here playing. Okay. I started the first one. Loops on this one. Okay, so that's how you build these things. Now, so some of these, like this one, already have its own internal effects and its performance values. Uh, if I'm going to load another one, like the Phase 84, this one also is very powerful. Get the performance value here. It's not patched. Oh, that's my problem. I have any, and I don't have enough inputs now because I'm using all the four of them. So I can't patch this one. So like the real deal now, I've got a problem of how many inputs. So that's where you need to decide how you're going to work with it. And actually I have two drums. I've got uh, three synth, actually one, two, three, actually four synths. So I can, I can manage to do less. If I find that this is too big, or that is too big, or I might want to have another uh, mixer I bring in here, or let's say I'm going to take that one and put it to trash, so this is gone. Now if I go here, I actually connect this one to this, I have a free one. I'll actually do another video just on this one because I like this one. It's uh... well, it's actually using distortion from phase, uh, what they call phase distortion, and it's something that came out about the same time as FM as a different way to create uh, digital noisy sound, and it's it's good at this. So, um, and again, you have his own sequencer that appears here. You can create the notes, enter the notes if you want. That's it, you enter the notes and then it sounds like weird. Nope, not good, okay? So, I'll show you examples of sessions I did just to demonstrate how to use it. Um, I have this one here, where you have the drum machine uh, here. You have two effects, you've got the IMPC, you've got these things running, okay? But there's a cool effect they call the glitch board. And I took the entire mixer into the glitch board and now what I have is, it's, it's a looper of a section. And then you have the same thing in reverse. Okay, and the bottom line here, these are, filter low pass resonance and opening up same thing but doesn't close entirely same thing but different sound you have this one which is i pass i pass i pass again different movement in the i pass so you could combine
whatever, you know, you can play with that. And this, this can be recorded because this also has a sequence. So you could record that and make something interesting. So that's it for this, you know. Another example of another weird little piece of programming is this thing. This is just weird stuff happening. It's pretty fun. But so you can record it also. You can record how this really reacts. Um, I would actually use this and not to err on everything, but you can glitch, let's say, a lead or a, a sample. So it's pretty fun, kind of a glitch beat effect here. And when again we look at what you have left, you had a cue board, which is a beat juggler, actually samples what's coming in, and you can let's let's try it. Um, Cue board is actually, I don't have any space for it, but uh, uh, you can, it chops up the sound, you can re trigger them. Uh, you get the tone matrix, a crossfade, a splitter unit, and the rest are effects, you know, filter, the glitch board is the one we have here, um, expander, limiter, process. There's also a spin back. This one is, you actually go in and you can load, um, let's say you want to play. You can load uh, music. Let's say we load something from a guy named uh, Nutrix. Just to see if I have anything. So I'm going to take that one. I don't know what it is. So, okay. So I've got this thing playing. Okay, I'm not good at this, but you see where I'm going with that. You can actually load your stuff, make it work, and depending on what you want, it's a cool thing to add if that's what you're looking for, again. So this, all of these things are stuff you can have. Uh, there's a recorder, uh, you can, it's an input recorder, so you can record what's coming into the microphone here. Uh, if you have a microphone, you can actually use it. Um, and you also have a master mic. So you actually connect this to um, other, you know, um, apps if you want. You know, so let's say I'm gonna. Can I actually? I'm gonna go another session. Okay, close this one. I'm gonna lose everything and go into this one here for fun. Just have another one. Well, this one, and I'm gonna go here. I said that the last one at the bottom, then I, I'm going to try this mastermind here, Enter App Audio. So what you have on this one here is you have controller. And again, select app. I want to control, I know, um, Animog here. So I'm sending from the notes from here to control the Animog which is actually. So it now integrates with the rest of your studio. But if you want to say what I did here, I want to keep, well, you go into session and you have rendered a wave and you render into wave and it appears as a file. And when you connect it to the iTunes and to your computer and just load it in. There's a, really a lot of sounds you can use with this one. Um, I like the fact that you can have these sent right into this, the fact that you can have these modules here. And the fact that it's limited in a way force you to choose and to make music with that uh, and not just have stuff for fun. I would also like to have um, kind of a module you put in um, like the one we just talked about. There was one here that you can actually load in and have uh, the interapp controller here you can drop and have it but um, I haven't used it but the inter effects should be also the same thing so you can actually use from your mixer send to an external effect or another app and bring the signal back into this so again for 279 it's good remember that the, the app the, that you get when you start with is free so then you just add the features as you need them which is okay because at the end it doesn't cost you more than buying a, 
a, a, another DAW in a way. So I think it's pretty fun. I like this. I like this approach. I like this uh, modular kind of patching approach that you can make, and the fact that every time you load it, you have an entire different studio depending on how you wanted to patch stuff. I don't particularly love the sequencer. It's workable. It's not bad, but it's meant for people to actually play live and are good at it. If you're, I'm more. I'm. I'm not so bad at playing live, but I'm better at programming what I want, and uh, I find that the the sequencer is not as what I want usually. I'm not saying it's bad, it's just not the way I'm used to work in let's say Gadget for example, but it's still very powerful and that's what I like about this is the fact you can combine all of these things together and mix, mix and match the way you want. And uh, as, as, as you have, you can actually sample and re-put into let's say the IMPC and trigger your sound after that if you want. So pretty interesting. Well, that's it guys, tabletop free to start and then you buy as you go along so try it out have some fun play with it you'll see that uh, even the introduction version it's pretty fun to play you know after that if you find it fits the way you want to work then go ahead buy it but if you don't work then put it aside and just use it sometime for fun that's it hope this is actually useful to help you think about these different ways of making music and another app that you might not know about the tabletop from retronyms that's it. See you soon, guys.